Hi, welcome to ECA's Coffee Burlington. I'm here today with Rebecca and we're going to discuss some similarities and differences between a couple of the Breville Barista lineup. So we have the Impress Touch and the regular Barista Touch. Um, we're going to tell you what we like, um, love, maybe don't need yeah uh, so it just depends on your wants and needs and where you're at um, with your coffee skills so first off we have the um impress touch and what does the Impress Touch give us, Rebecca? <laughs> well, so this is a brand new machine from mm -hmm. Breville. So it just came out this year, um, actually in the summer, which is, it's only been around for a few months. Right. So this guy, they've introduced what's called Barista Guidance, and they've also introduced the Impress Puck system into that. So that, the Impress Puck system, we saw on the Barista Express Impress. So it's the assisted tamping handle. So you pull that lever down, and it's going to give you a consistent tamping pressure every time. And it polishes it a little bit too? It does, yeah. so definitely beneficial for a multi-person household that's using yeah. it. Everybody has a little bit, a slightly different tamping pressure when they're tamping, mm -hmm. um, so super helpful. And the Brista Guidance, it is to help you dial in your espresso. So it's going to let you know whether or not you have a good or a not so good shot. Um, and how to make those changes to get a good shot. Now, I will note that with the Barista Guidance, um, it is a new technology, right. so it does take some calibrating. So whenever you find that, we, since we've had this machine for a little bit now, wanna quickly touch on it. If you find that the uh, Barista Guidance is giving you some incorrect information, it's always best to just head back to your settings menu and redo the Intelligent Brew setup especially when you go through um, seasonal changes, so temperature, humidity, all of that stuff affects the beans, right? right? And so now that we're kind of coming into the colder months, I found I had to redial in my, my machine hmm. and I only use Colombian espresso. So, so you know. So I know. Right. It's because of the weather changes. So just something of note that, um, that I wanted to bring up with this since it's something that I've noticed with yeah. it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so that is the Breeze to Touch Impress. We also have a big old bean hopper up top and we have a upgraded steaming wand too. So you're able to get a better froth for your alternative milk. So you're an oat milker. <laughs> or you're an oat milker. <laughs> if you're an oat milker, if you're <laughs> milking your oats at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If you're an oat milk drinker or an almond milk drinker, any of those, you can better froth your milk with um, with this machine. Yeah. Uh, so they've uh, made that quite discernible here with their red ring. Yes. So exactly. So if yeah, if the machine has that, then you know it's got. Um, yeah. 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 And then we have the Barista Touch as well. So the Barista Touch has been around for a few years now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's always been a good mover. The touch screen makes things really easy for you. You have the, the recipes pre-programmed. You have that on the uh, touch and press as well. Mm -hmm. But not everybody knows exactly what goes into a cappuccino or exactly what goes into a latte. So when you're starting out, that's super helpful because um, it's just not always common knowledge as you as a avid coffee drinker at home may think it is, it's not always. So yeah. really great to introduce into this, um, these machines is the color display touchscreen. We have, both machines have a 54 millimeter portafilter on the Barista Touch. You do have to tamp yourself. Um, and you do have to know how to dial in the espresso mm -hmm. correctly because it's not going to help you and it's not going to tell you what changes to make, when to make them, why to make them, et cetera. And we wanted to touch on the rate of pour. Yes. So talking about that is one of these is volumetric and one is timed. Yes. And what do we like and not like about that? <laughs> we like volumetric. We do. <laughs> and we do not like the timed. So the touch and press pours volumetrically, meaning that it will always pour two ounces, unless your espresso is so fine that nothing is coming out. Right. Then just nothing comes out. So then you only need to change your grind setting. Yes. Especially on this machine with the uh, with it helping you out with the tamping. Exactly. Which is fantastic for a learner. Yes. Right. So you always want two ounces in 30 seconds. Right. So 
Volumetric makes that dialing in process a lot easier and it's more consistent throughout all espresso machines right. is that they're volumetric as opposed to being timed. The breeze to touch is timed. So it will always pour for the programmed time, but the volume Fluctuates. changes. Right. Exactly. So it, it's just kind of, it's switching your way of thinking. And if you have this machine at home and you've only ever dialed in on this machine, then what we're saying may not make sense. May, may not make sense to you. But yeah, having a timed machine is is weird to dial in. So you're changing your grind size based upon the amount coming out, which yes. should be around 40 mils for a double shot. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's just a little backwards. The same rules apply if your espresso is pouring too fast, then you still need to make it finer. Mm -hmm. Pouring too slow, you need to make it coarser. But instead of looking at the seconds, you're looking at the volume that's there. Right. So it's just a little funky. Um, one for us. It is, yes. <laughs> a little funky for it us. It is a little funky for us. Um, price points as well are quite different. So right. the touch comes in at around- 1600. 1600 bucks, Canadian. And, and yeah, then and the touch and press is 2200 bucks. Right. So you're paying for those upgraded- um, Intelligent. Intelligent systems in the machine. Plus the IQ, right? Yes. So the milk. Milk, the milk IQ will only make a difference um, potentially if you have alternative milk. So. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. If you're a regular milk drinker, then... Might not make a difference. No, right. you can go anywhere with your with your milk. Right. Um, both machines have the same size water tank too, just around two liters, um, which is very standard for a home machine. Mm -hmm. The Touch and Press does have a slightly larger bean hopper, so it's 340 grams, as opposed to these that are 250. So almost 100 grams more, which is nice. Well, I have uh, this size hopper on my machine. Um, I don't think I would fill it up anymore just because there's only two people right now doing shots. Yeah. I could see this if you had a larger amount yeah. of people drinking. Absolutely. Sure. I don't, um, like I, my machine has the same size as well as the Barista Touch, and I don't find it being too small. Mm -hmm. either yeah so yeah are we gonna brew let's make some coffee yes all right so let's start with the uh touch and press and we'll move over onto the touch so, so we're gonna we're gonna make some milk beverages um both of these machines have the beverages pre-programmed so we're just gonna click on the icon want to do a latte since yeah. they're both up on the screen that sounds good so i'm gonna hit here oh well, that just woke it up so it's, it's telling me it's a double shot, which is perfectly fine because that's what's in there, the double basket in here. I'm just gonna hit it and it's gonna start grinding. I love the built-in tamper, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, me too, it makes <laughs> it so much easier. Mm -hmm. And there's like no mess either, which is great. Mm -hmm. I know Breville did start putting in the funnel, the right. dosing funnel, yes. with their machine. So if you're looking at the Breeze to Touch and you're purchasing around this time, the dosing funnel would be included with the machine. Wasn't before. So now it, yeah, so now it's indicating for me to push the lever down. It's kind of cool, it tells you. Oh, and look at that, it's dialed in. You got a check mark. I know. Isn't that <laughs> Amazing nice? how that happens. I know. <laughs> but if it wasn't a needle uh, more, it would tell you to hit it again. Yeah, it would, and it would tell you if it had too much, in which case you would use the razor trimming tool that comes with the machine, and you just trim off the excess tamped espresso, mm -hmm. discard it. So you're um, not wasting a whole shot. Yeah, try not to dump all the coffee out. <laughs> Which, yeah. All right. Done that before. Let's and now look. it's going to pour and count our seconds. And if we fall within a good range, it, sh it should give us a green check mark. It should, yeah. It's, it's giving you all the accolades for doing everything correctly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Definitely makes you feel good. Let's see. Oh, it gave us a nice check mark. So then we're gonna move over to the steaming. So again, as long as the jug is sitting on, you can show it on that one, yeah. what it's sitting on. It's a sensor on both machines right here. Your jug has to be sitting on that. It'll tell you if it's not on, if it's not sensing. Um, because it will just keep going and going and going if you walk away. So make sure you pay attention when you're setting it. Yeah, exactly. So that Because uh, I've learned from experience that can happen. Yes. <laughs> and I, you do have to use the Breville 
steaming jugs as well on the sensor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't read it properly. Mm -hmm. There may be other ones that are compatible, but in my experience, same thing has happened where I've used a non-Breville jug and it did not read the temperature correctly. Right. Yeah. So this is sensing the temperature and foam level. Uh, that is out of the box. You can program yes. that to have um, it's set for your liking. Yes. You want it less or more, more bubbles, more bubbles. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the beauty with the uh, automatic steam wands is you don't have to steam your milk. That's right. You, you, the machine can do it all for you. But mm -hmm. if you did want to, both units, when the wand is in the upright position, you can manually steam. Right. So if you had somebody at home that wanted to be a barista, then they could do that if they wanted yeah, to. Stretch your own milk. Yes. Well, there you go. And now it's telling you you need a cloth, so because it does a self purge. Mm -hmm. So you lift it up. Oh, and this wand is insulated, whereas the Barista Touch wand is not insulated. See, it's just telling you there's hot water coming out of that right now. I don't do latte art, so let's give it to the person who does the latte art. I don't know art. if I'm going to do latte art either. So if you have your cloth, you're ready to go. Yeah, this is a little too bubbly for some latte art. That's okay though. It's still gonna taste good. Oh, yes it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. really good. Yeah, the nice thing about having automatic features in your machine is there's a lot of consistency with right. the drinks, especially when you're newer to the espresso game. Like sometimes it's just so much right to get it consistent you know i know oh, we you, know you're standing there for like 10 minutes you're like, i can't get the good i can't get a good shot i can't get it dialed in right. but when the machine knows what it's doing it's going to dial in for you which Does is it fantastic for you. Right. exactly hey well, so i got a good shot what about you <laughs> well i guess now it's all up to me so that's the difference with the barista touch it's all you if you get a not so great shot you need to know how to fix it. You need to know what to do to make that a good shot. But the manual is fantastic. It'll yes. tell you. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Rebel has the best manuals. Yeah, for, that's what I think. Yeah, yes. Really does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to first select the beverage I want and we're going to do another latte. And I'm going to stick my portafilter just in the forks here and then press it, give it a tap into the sensor in the back. You could also press the circle icon on the front I just, You're so used out to, of habit, yeah, just tap, tap it. it. Yeah. So it's going to grind for the seconds we have set at the grind size we have it set at. And so Rebecca has dialed these machines in ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting fresh beans in, you might have to do a little bit more fooling around with these. Yes, exactly. And um, I did dial it in probably about half hour ago, so it could change. Yes. So we'll, we'll see. Let's see how good I did. Let's see, Miss Barista. <laughs> Just giving it a good old tamp. Breville's uh, portafilters lay flat as well if you uh, need some help to tamp. Tamper's up top. Give it a nice press. Magnetic. Yeah. Gotta like it. So we usually tell customers to apply around 30 pounds of pressure. And what is that? When tamping? Don't use your bicep. <laughs> no, exactly. It, it's just a good press. Yeah. Don't pack it in, but give it a good press to make sure that, oh, this is a bit of a big cup. I'm gonna have mm -hmm. to maybe put that off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, good press, don't really pack it in there, otherwise nothing's gonna come out. We don't want that. Okay, we're gonna press blue. We're gonna press blue. <laughs> we're going to press brew and brew the double shot espresso. So it's going to pour for 30 seconds, but we're going to know whether or not it's dialed in based on how much is in here and as well as the coloring of the espresso. Right, so you don't want it to be too light. Exactly. Um, and if you're at all concerned, you can uh, brew into some shot glasses. Yep, exactly, to see if you're getting the two ounces or if you're going up or below. I think this one poured a little um, a little sh uh, short. Yeah. Um, even though it gave us a check mark and it still tastes yeah. delicious, so. Yeah. So that looks really good. Looks like it's a halfway decent shot. Yep. There we go. And now I'm going to just move the... Uh, jug. The jug, thank you, back onto the sensor. And we have it set at uh, froth, level, froth level five. <laughs> 
and temperature is uh, 150, which is pretty standard. So I'm just going to click the milk button and it's going to, there we go. All right. Okay, so just like the touch and press, this <laughs> machine is going to do a little bit of a purge after we have froth our milk. So that's to make sure that the, um, the holes in the steam wand aren't clogged. Yeah, they're easy to get unclogged yes. if, if you perchance walk away and forget, but. Yeah, but it happens and, ooh, this is frothy. That's really good. Yeah, I love that froth. Mmm, smells good too. Mm. That was just all foam. <laughs> It's just great latte. Home. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, five is, is usually like, it's a little bit higher in the foam level. So somebody played around with the settings, but that's okay, because I like the foam. I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Foamier than mine. But so, then again, it's supposed to be a latte, so. Yeah. Mm. The um, touch and press is definitely for the person that wants almost a super automatic experience. Right. You just have to, um, after you're done, you just have to knock this out. Yeah. And there was no mess. No, there's Not, no mess. So I there's have the no Burst of Pro and it, even I like, it's a little mucky compared to this, but yeah, love the flavor on all of them. Yeah, exactly. So you can see here, we've got some grinds on the Barista Touch from our grinding. Now the funnel would assist with that, but you will still get grinds on the counter. A little bit. Yeah, you will just a bit. Um, and look, there's nothing. Exactly. Clean as whistle. Yeah, not a single. But there would. Single it would be once you, if you knock that out, you might. You might but a little you bit. Know what? Not much at all. Nope. Um, Barista Touch definitely for somebody that wants a little bit of that automatic experience with the mm -hmm. touch screen. Everything's just laid out for you right there. You can program and save um, some of your own beverages as well and name them with your own icons, which is fun. Yes. We have some here. Um, and it can, also helps with your cup sizes too, right? So, yes, you know, exactly. So exactly. more overflow and stuff like that. But you do have to want to do the espresso part. Yes. Or, or be okay with it because it's going to be half of the process. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dialing it in. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so both machines as well come with a two-year warranty from Breville. Yes. So great warranty there. And they both have uh, really fast conical burr grinders, which I like. Yeah. Um, do you have any last comments about these machines? I do not, because I like the espresso and coffee out of all of them. So yeah. I'm pretty pretty satisfied across the whole range of the barista yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah us, me too. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions about either of these machines, you can just drop them down below in the comment section and uh, follow us on all of our social media channels. Hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with <laughs> us and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. Okay. All right. Cheers. Cheers. See you next Bye. time. Bye.